What's up, guys? Um, I was waiting for the heavy drums. I, the no. intro music was going. I was waiting for a hi hat <laughs> four count. I thought we were gonna. I thought we were gonna get it going. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll ask William to do that little introduction and give me that hi hat. What's up, guys? I'm Melanie Nix. The Nix hey, podcast. What's up? What's going got on? Like overload. Yo yo. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like I feel like you guys bombarded me with with the stover load. I didn't know I didn't know he was gonna be here, and <laughs> I, and I'm delighted. Believe me, I really am. I just didn't. I didn't know. The stover load is a lot to handle at times. <laughs> I'm gonna share this out though at the same time. Go ahead. Happy, happy, happy thing that uh, Mike is here. I asked him to be here uh, because the first time I've heard of you guys. We were doing a double header on the Stoverload podcast. It was crossover oh. and um, sepsis on that night. So I meant we bring both full back circle. The, the only person on, well, the only person on the continent that can talk a, as long or as winded as myself is, of course, the Stoverload. So it's when you have. When you have Stover and you have Savant, you're not going to have any dead air. This is true. <laughs> well, me and Melissa will just smile and nod. It's okay, guys. You guys go ahead. Yeah, that's why she. Ahead. That's why she brings me. I normally try to get her to do the interviews. I usually try to watch oh most of the stuff we do online. She usually does it. I'm, I'm a streamer. Yeah, you it's are. okay. It's good to have you both here. I mean. I brought in some reinforcements, so she brought in her reinforcement. Let's do this. <laughs> so how you guys doing? Thank you for taking the invitation to be with us. Happy to be here. Doing good. Yeah, no, we're doing we're doing really well. Uh, it's I think it's really the first day that the weather, the temperature's been bright and it was gorgeous sun, today. My, this was yeah. a, this is an overwhelmingly beautiful day in new england we're a new england band we're from manchester new hampshire uh and we've been playing in the area for the last 12 or 13 years so this is usually a, a an, well it still is it's an important time for all bands like regional and moving around and local bands we're a local band um so you know everybody gets ready you know um before february at least if you're if you're doing it these days Everybody gets ready, and then about now, that's when the first shows um, really start kicking off. So it's an important time for uh, me and Melissa because uh, it is post-fiscal responsibilities. For all of you adults in the in the <laughs> chat, um, oh. <laughs> me and myself and Melissa, um, we've understood that small bands are businesses. If not for if yeah. not for if not if not great clients for big corporations like Facebook, for instance. I mean, I so, mean, this this is where I met back with you guys. Is um, I started the podcast and I was like, okay, I need bands, I need bands, and then I saw you guys make a post and you were like, all right, guys, follow each other, help each other out, you know. Mm -hmm. Instead of paying Facebook, instead of paying those big companies, we can do this, and we are. I mean. It certainly, it, certainly, it certainly helps in terms of peaks and valleys. Um, and what I mean by that is you can do ads or you could pay companies to say nice things about you temporarily. Um, and you could certainly buy into um, like social media and stuff like that. And, 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 and I, I mean, different companies and bands and products have... Uh, a variety of tastes and ambition and how they view their success. Okay. So, you know, wherever you invest your time and money is usually spread out, but I just meant in the terms of us being fiscal, res fiscally responsible. What I meant was this is after the tax season guys and mm -hmm. sepsis is a business. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, smaller bands that have that haven't maybe figured that out yet or aren't taking that that route. Uh, but for us, um, when you asked how I was doing, I was really I thought about it and that's really uh, relieved because for, right. for for because for for people like us, we make a living doing this shit. Yes. 
We yeah. don't, there's no, we don't have, there's no side gigs. I don't have a side band. I don't have a side girlfriend. I don't have a side hustle. I don't have, there's no side hustle for me. This is your life. This is what I don't, put, I don't put all my eggs in one basket. I put them in many fucking baskets. Oh, you guys the baskets are, I want to put them in. Sometimes. You guys are everywhere. You're not just in the music. You're streaming, Melissa yes. Paints. And the, the I basket. mean, you guys are like, exactly. Yeah. It's all over. <laughs> You guys so we are. have many eggs and we have yep. many baskets and and being fiscally responsible um, is is our priority, because when you're doing this for a living, you're doing it for survival, not for fucking followers. Yeah. Hmm, that brings a whole different level and appetite to the to understanding the reasons why we may or may not do certain things. <laughs> absolutely but you guys run this like a business it's not uh i've had interviews with other bands that told me we're just hobbyists we have nine yeah, to five so. jobs and we do shows but it's just a hobby and can i can i be honest with you a lot of yeah. hobbyists and i mean th there are people without cell phones or homes or people that live in the subway that are brilliant songwriters and they are ground movers and they are just as talented, if not superior, intelligent contributions to art and culture. We just have never heard of them. Absolutely. I agree. So people, people can be very popular and talented and not make any fucking money. And people can be popular and talented and make a lot of money and not be very nice people. And people can be talented and have 4,000 you know, monthly followers on Spotify and they don't get 14 happy birthdays on their Instagram. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> proof's in the pudding. <laughs> Proof, proof's, up, 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 proof's in the pudding. But, you know, in a, in a, in a time and culture in modern day area when we're so obsessed with metrics, I figure I'd point those out. Absolutely. I agree. And I, I'm guilty myself. I'm not going to try to be superior to anybody else you know we i catch are. myself all the time looking at my numbers and going why is it going down i'm yeah, doing numbers so much and numbers please, don't make numbers. numbers don't make you more honest you know and the numbers don't make you a better guitar player certainly not <laughs> absolutely i agree with you i agree because we could see some big bands with a lot of millions of followers and i'm fans with a lot of people i wouldn't be in the fucking room with Think about Freddy Krueger. He's a cool cat, huh? People love Jason fucking Voorhees. You don't want to hang out with him, do you? I mean... Um, Some people will pretend like they do on camera, but if you were really hanging out with, you know, Michael Myers, he fucked you up. You wouldn't want to hang out with that guy. No. I know guys big... like Michael Myers. You don't want to hang out with him. <laughs> I grew up with guys like Michael Myers. You don't want to hang go. out with him. There you go. Where does the name of the band Sepsis come from? Well, sepsis originated when we were trying to make ourselves Google searchable. Um, the name is really like uniquely ours. I know the original spelling is based off of a blood disease, um, but when you add the extra S at the end, it makes it us. What she means is she <laughs> what she means is she wanted to own it on the internet. She yes. knew that there'd be a million bands out there that called themselves S E P S I S. Yes. So in early in the game, Melissa figured out it's a Google world, honey. Yeah. You know what I mean? We realized blockchaining, SEO, owning stuff on the internet was the way to go. That's yeah, all. Sure. It's just I about mean, beating people to the fucking punch. I was looking for a podcast name and we were brainstorming and um, Danny Rose from chaotic Rose media told me she was like uh, Nixus. It's like your name is Nix. Everybody has a Nexus. And if you yep. type on Google, Nexus is everywhere. Everybody has that. a podcast called Nexus. So it mm -hmm. became the Nexus podcast. So now when you type exactly like Melissa thought, mm -hmm. I come up because, oh, did you mean this? Well, right. It, it eliminates us having, it, it, eliminates, it eliminates us having to fight with um, like, like, global trademark issues or copywriting that doesn't mean anything anymore like i mean if you got a driver's license in new jersey that doesn't mean shit in costa rica yeah we knew that so, there you know, would so, be like 20 plus bands right, right. who named themselves Sepsis. you can have a painting company in italy called 
high class white glove painting and you can hold up your copyright and your trademark all the fuck you want but it doesn't mean anything in nova scotia it doesn't mean anything in the hood you see what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 yeah, it doesn't. It, your, your driver's license only means okay. Your driver's license is only important as the people that acknowledge it, dude. So if you look at blue checks, or you look at driver's licenses, or if you look at badges, or the Grammys, or the charts, and you make a big fucking deal about it, I guess you did. I mean, the blue checks can be bought now, and I'm not. Gonna some of them can. Them. Some of them can't. Depends where you go. It's not you. I, it's not predictable. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, Facebook asked me if I wanted to buy my blue check, and I was like, I, "For what?" There's some, there's the some proof sites that are doing that. Who I now, am? But, yeah. Like, no, I'm good. Like, I wouldn't buy it if I were you. I don't need it that much. I don't. I really don't need it that much. You know what I, I mean? Wouldn't, I I wouldn't subscribe to it myself. Yeah, I'd skip over it. So we That's got a lot of people it. here. The swarmies are here in force, supporting you guys. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm I've been sitting here struggling and stammering to share this i found it now <laughs> and now i'm going to share it i got a question for you guys sure and i was thinking about this because we've talked a lot william we've had a lot of cool conversations and something i was thinking about a lot you're not supposed to tell anybody about these conversations that we have <laughs> Nobody knows about these. Don't worry. Your secrets are safe with me. Okay. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> and our viewers. You know, I remember back in the day how music always spoke for itself before the internet. And you really had to be talented and your music really had to stand out in order to attract a following, a label, or just to spread the gift of music from what you can do. Now we fast forward to where we are now. And I've heard a lot of people say that the music industry is oversaturated. Everyone's in a band. Everyone's a singer. Everyone's doing this. Everyone's doing that. Where do you two personally think this started when it got oversaturated? Um, I mean, I would have to make, I would have to first agree with the fact that it is oversaturated. Um, if I had to really hyper focus in on the question, I'd have to say oversaturated with people role playing. Yes, there's a lot of people that are role playing. Um, there's, you know, because of devices and products, I think that consumers are encouraged to act like celebrities and public figures. And I think that consumers, because of devices and the growth of, you know, um, social media apps and the, the current bloodlust to be right and the greed in big words like algorithm and AI and monetization. I think we all have a, a big bloodlust to be right all the time. Um, and I think that we are living in a, an accelerated moment of what feels like intelligence, what feels like knowledge. And I think that there's a strange desire for the common man to act like a fucking journalist or a doctor or a rock star or a boxer, it's more important for people because the devices allow you to, to mimic and to pretend to be a combat fighter or to be a gangster or to be a rock star. Or, but the thing is, violin's always been cool, but you don't see people, people pretending to do that. that do you? <laughs> <laughs> so when we say the, it's oversaturated, I say, no, it's not oversaturated with musicians. It's not oversaturated with talent. It's oversaturated with people pretending and obsessing about followers. Cosplayers. And attention. Ah, yeah. We got people that are obsessed with images and looking like they're guitar players. We have people that will cut all the fucking body parts off their face. We have people that will pretend that their voice, they'll, they'll mask their voice. They got machines and all type of different robotics on stage and all type of synthetic behaviors online. And it's hyper focused. It's hyper blasted at you every fucking second of the day. Um, no, I don't feel any. Um, actually, I don't even relate to that. So when people ask me if my life is oversaturated with that, no, it's not because I don't spend my time on the internet for personal reasons. So the only people who feel this way are struggled with discovery. They're struggling with their identity. They're still experiencing life like a fucking child. 
I don't experience my life. I, I'm not stuck in an adult's body reminiscing and fantasizing about what kids do and kids dress like. I got shit to do. I'm going to have to completely agree with you. So I got shit to do. So I don't spend a lot of time online begging for friends. I don't beg people for attention. I don't give a fuck. So the question was, when do you think all that got to this point? It, did, it never got to me. Well, not to you guys. I'm saying it's to a lot of people observable. you may know or what I, you I may mean, see. I mean, okay. I, I mean, I see we address this sort of thing a lot with, with our fans. Sometimes our fans um, are, are undergoing extreme you know, um, they're, they're undergoing extreme experiences of the internet. And I'm all, you know, and I'm always trying to explain to them that there's only two kinds of people on the internet, people buying shit and people selling shit. Pretty much so all the prod the, the, so the, the, the people that the big corporations that are responsible for all these products, they know how bad people are hungry for attention. Can you repeat your question, I, Mike? Somebody's asking what we're talking about. Uh, well, the question was, um, I, okay, oversaturated may not have been the correct word, but that's the one we're going with. Throw it at me again. I love this shit. A, another way it was described as over-industrialized, as I saw in the comments. Manufactured? That's another good way to put it. When do you think it got more more extreme? Because, as I said, ever since before the when, internet and when, whatnot. I'll tell you when. i tell you when. When people forgot about photographers and now you're probably like what the fuck are you talking about it's images it's imagery okay it's it's about the selfie mike it's about the selfie it's when people were taught the selfie when people when people bought into the idea that they shouldn't they couldn't convince or hire photographers to take pictures of them it's when people convince themselves that they were cute enough to take pictures of themselves, Mike. Photographers don't want to take pictures of ugly motherfuckers. There's no lie in that. <laughs> so the minute that you could take your personality and take a picture of it, the minute you could take your image and force it on people, yeah, that's when everybody started acting stupid. Yeah. Then when people could take an image of themselves in front of a bunch of fucking strangers and re-narrate and reanimate, when they could reanimate and manufacture their behaviors and fool the weakest people on the internet, that's when that happened. And the weakest people on the internet are responsible for most of the buying. And the smallest people on the internet are responsible for the fucking content. So the real people, the authentic people, have never been oversaturated by authentic people. Never. There's only inventors and fucking criminals. Damn right. I, 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 I think where you were going, Mike, with that question is when all the bands popped up. And I'm going to tell you, it's the same time, I guess, this crossover popped up. COVID because nobody had nothing to do. We were all stuck in our houses and everybody said, you know what? Let me put out an album. <laughs> we, everybody did it. I'm sorry, guys. Um, it is, you know, that's, um, that's when I realized that the music world was getting a little crowded. Well, and... some people didn't realize anything in, until the pandemic because nobody had mm -hmm. ever stopped their day for 15 minutes. They didn't realize they had a rickety doorknob. They didn't realize they couldn't rap. They didn't realize their butt didn't smell. If you go online and tell everybody <laughs> that their butt smells, people start arguing with you. <laughs> I agree. You say anything. You say, hey, I'm for sticks. Somebody be like, I'm for branches. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> Try it. I'm an advertiser online. We're not a fucking band. We're a gift shop, please. That's why I love talking with Will. We can go back and forth all day long. I love I'm Will. <laughs> I'm the most public guy on the <laughs> internet. Everybody makes their life on the internet telling secrets. I'm the most public fucking person in the world. He is an open book, guys. And before we started the interview, I did tell him that he could say anything he wanted. Um, everybody knows on this on this podcast it is how it is. We give an open platform. You guys say what you need to say. That's how it is. I appreciate that. I gotta Most give a lot of credit to you guys, though. For entertainment, I assure you. 
<laughs> most of it. <laughs> Gotta give a lot of props to you two, though, because even during the pandemic, you guys were constantly running your band like a business. You kept content going. You were, and Lexi was one of the frontline generals next to you guys, encouraging people to work together, support one another. And you're still doing it to this very day. And that's, we're talking like two years ago. So, yeah, when we first when we first started in uh, 2012, we didn't look like the other bands. You know, me and Melissa, we came with the Braves, and you know, we had Spanish and black people in the scenes. There's not a lot of dark skinned or brown people that play guitar or scream where I'm from. You know, um, I grew up on gangster rap. You know, um, I was a battle rapper in state prison. I so I, my my background is a little bit different. Our a lot wardrobe of, has always been wild. And yeah, colorful. so we just looked a little bit different. We was we was a lot different coming into this. Uh, we chose to wear a lot of color. Our music, you, you know, you dance to it a little bit more. I wear um, a tail on stage. Right, we do some silly <laughs> stuff, but yeah. so we were made fun of abusively when we first started the band, because all the all the bands that we all the bands, nothing against them. We love these bands. We love the Satan bands and the Mean bands and the Killer bands and the Gangster bands. All of them are cool. But when we started, we didn't really want to do that because that that that's all there was. At like when we started, all there was was you know killer bands and I'm gonna I'm gonna get you bands and tough guy bands. And we we wanted to do something that was a little sexier, uh, a little more mature, uh, something that something you know females could get involved in, um, some you know couples, uh, intellectuals. We just figured there already there was already so many bands that are beating people up and scaring people and horror bands and you know yeah, bands and that. Bands that were so big that they stood like above their fans. We were just like Melissa wanted to build a band. Stop me if I'm wrong. Melissa wanted to build a band that didn't stand. We didn't want to stand over our fans. We didn't want to be like these myth mythical characters that were bigger and stronger than the common man. We wanted. To, we didn't want to. We didn't want to be worshipped by fans or like because that's the metal bands that we grew up with. You know what I mean? The ones that oh, pretty, 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 please, can you come out of the green room and yeah, they're, you know, so, they're too we, good to talk right? To you know, you. we always <laughs> felt like fucking hey, man, wouldn't it be cool if we got this thing going and we just weren't that band that hid in the green room? Wouldn't it be cool if they were like so when the devices came out and going live and being able to connect with people and start groups and networks? It was like a dream come true to us because. <laughs> You know, we had the gatekeepers and the labels. And we, honestly, we really weren't good enough. You know, people didn't feel like we were great enough to, to connect with people. There were no middlemen that were going to give us the thumbs up to have fans or friends or anybody. And we got made fun of um, critically, uh, abusively, you know, when, when we started. And we just kept pushing and kept playing. But one thing that was cool um, is we kept playing and we played with the heaviest bands around. And um, what was really cool is after some time, they started calling us. Well, they started making fun of us. They said, sepsis they're the band and they just got all the band likes that's all they do and i and we and you know so we went home this i mean this we were kids we went home and we, we you know we that hurt our feelings and we went home and so oh man you know one of these days we're going to be good we couldn't keep a lineup you can't keep a you can't keep a lineup playing this kind of music six people in the band if you can't keep the lineup you can't get good at it if you can't get nobody to bite into it for 18 months, two years, three years. For what we do on stage, if you've ever seen us on stage, it takes you a couple of years to get good at this shit. It's like really athletic. It's physical. We got a lot of shit going on during the show. Um, so I don't know, man. Like at first we were we were we were made fun of and we were called um, the band that gets other band likes. That's what they yeah. called us. The Facebook band. We and um, called the Facebook, the Facebook band. band. And uh, so, uh, you know, me and Melissa, you know, we're up for a good challenge. And uh, we embraced it, man. Instead of pouting about it or, or instead of lashing out, um, you can look back in history. We ain't never said nothing about another band or another human being or, or a personality or an individual. We're hardball business players. We ain't never played personal uh, feelings or emotions online, ever. You can't go back and... and, and over a decade of us being online, you can't ever catch us uh, doing that. And uh, so we didn't take it personally. We embraced it and we started saying, hey man, fuck it. We're the band that gets other band likes. And we started doing that. And we said, you know what? It's it's better off for us that we discover, you know, we're that, we're that terrible. We're that, we, you know, and we did sound bad. We did. We were awful. We were awful and we knew it and, 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 um, you know, and um, as long as we know, right? I, mean, we are, I mean, it was embarrassing. Well, I mean, sure. you're honest with yourself, you know, it like... is what it is, man. It's not, you know, we'll have some rough gigs in the future. It's part of it. It's part of it comes with this shit, you know, um, you know, every guy, every band in, in, in the chat right now is like thinking of every sound guy that's in their near future this summer. Like, oh, <laughs> my mouth shut. Don't start fighting the sound guy. 
All right. Whatever you Whatever do. You do. <laughs> I don't care what the deal is. Bring them a drink. Listen, actually, don't bring them a drink. They are your best De friends. Right. Depends <laughs> Depends on when you bring them a drink. Bring them a drink later. Gio earlier. said I thought they'd be taller. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Don't say that. We'll get into that. Gio is um, so tall. So, uh, yeah, man. Um, we were the band that gets other band likes. And instead of fucking pouting about it or making a big deal about it or responding to online behaviors or, or you know, coming out of character, uh, we embraced it, and to this day, we're the band that gets other band, bands' likes. And 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 because of because of it, people reminded us of it so much. It kind of taught us this cool habit of discovery, and that's where you see the rock and metal reset and everything that like Lexi's doing is like all built off of like not being afraid of bands and like crushing this whole belief that like someone's in competition with Sepsis. No, you're not. Cause you sound nothing like us. You don't look like us. You don't do nothing like we do on stage. I can fucking guarantee it. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to fear me anymore. Your likes aren't like mine. My plays aren't like yours. Melissa don't look like you. I don't give a fuck about you. We can leave each other completely alone. But if we're committed to supporting each other, if we're committed to discovery, then we can teach fans that listening to the same music every day, all day, is they're not limited to that. They're not limited to suggestions on Spotify. They're not limited to what's we're provided for them. We're right. playing on the radio. We're, we're fucking responsible for how we treat this stuff. We're responsible for how oversaturated we really feel that it is. If we feel that it's oversaturated with AI and robots, then we I guess we all need to start practicing a little bit more. I don't feel that it is. I feel that when you have more AI, when you have more robots, then you then you celebrate more people. I look for an opportunity for more authenticity. Mike says you're not scared to help other bands instead of thinking you're better. I've never gotten, and then here's the fucking crazy part. People are like, what's the gimmick, Will? What's the big trick, man? What is it, dude? There's gotta be some, you know, rapists need the secret. Ch child abusers need secrets. The government needs secrets. You need a secret to have a fucking war. I play guitar, man. There's not enough money in fucking rock and roll to keep secrets. Not right. from each other. I'm not afraid of my fucking neighbors because the internet scared the shit out of all of you. I don't have that problem. <laughs> I watched my mother die. I lost both my parents. I went to prison for 12 years. I grew up watching kids get their bones broken in the fucking hallway. I don't give a fuck about rock and roll. I do this shit for fun because I love my girlfriend. It's her dream, man. We don't make no money doing this shit. But you're making a big difference, follow. though. I don't care about followers. There's people that hate my guts that follow me. I don't give a fuck. You're Please. very outspoken. You're that doesn't very... make you who you are. It's not going to make you a nice guy. It's not going to tell the truth. But your music, though, what you and Melissa do, though, makes a big difference to the listeners because it gets them through a lot of good times, rough times, happy times. It makes a big difference in their life. And I think that's why you guys have such a following and a dedicated following at that outside of being frontline generals who so encouraging uniqueness and bringing I people together. Hits. Mike, I don't care about hits. Everyone's concentrated on metrics and hits and how long Spotify wants a song. I don't give a fuck about how Spotify, I don't even listen to Spotify. So if Spotify rewards, you know, artists for making songs under three minutes, then artists will make songs under three minutes. That goes back to jukeboxes, devices, record players. People started making longer songs because vinyl came out. Not because it was trending. Wake the fuck up! We care about our fans, and we want to make music that they want to hear, ultimately. <laughs> uh, we peer review everything that we make. That's a good point. Like, we don't, we don't, we actually, like, <laughs> it's like, you're not going to be able to hang out with Evanescence while they write music. You hang out <laughs> with Sepsis. You know, there's tears um, of our fanship where you can come out and you can say, hey, Will, I don't like that symbol there. Doesn't mean I'll change it. You know what I mean? But people will say, hey, you know, it would be great as a cool breakdown at this point. We'll, like, we'll consider that. Like, you're not going to be able to connect with your favorite bands and do that, like Sepsis does. There's a lot of good comments in here. See a fan say that our music somehow changed their life. And I never feel, and the reason why I never feel competitive is because we are always on the hunt because it is a residual ripple effect of us being the band that gets bands likes and us developing this habitual, easy come, live and let live math of discovery we're always now naturally making friends and discovering and boosting other people up regardless even bands that don't like us i don't give a fuck we're boosting them i don't care and 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 and, and now it's a natural part of our framework it's a natural part of our blueprint 
And because of this, there is a residual value that we get from this. We get to fucking ban stock all of you motherfuckers. We know what everybody's doing. I don't give a fuck if you change the fucking tuning heads on your guitar stock. I don't care if you got new cymbals, if you get a fucking puppy. I know about it. So when bands are like, oh my God, I want to watch me. Definitely. We watch the worst bands and we watch the best bands because we are a competitive band. We don't not competitive in the sense where people pout and talk shit. We're competitive in the sense of good sportsmanship. Well, you guys, you guys have like a the relationship you have your with your fans and everybody that approaches you is is beautiful. You know what I mean? Like that's because we like people. I know it's weird. People always ask me, what's the what's the what's the magic the thing is we love rock and roll and we we actually love the other bands we're always discovering there's a residual value from getting to know people and and being friends with people let me explain something to you there's no music industry that has fucking working departments that come together and fucking that's like when you're building an automobile mike that's like when you have the people that have built the steering column and those people when they come in they wave to the people in the break room hi break motherfuckers you guys are really cool guys and then they go in the other room they see the guys doing the windows <laughs> hi you fucking window nerds i see you over there wiping shit down and they all fucking slap five and they're all friends with everybody right and then they go and there are all these different departments that are coming together and they fucking hug and have cigarette breaks and listen to sepsis and shit after they get out of work no that is not the music industry there's not different departments that all come together to make a fucking vehicle that drives you and your baby down the street no 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 there isn't nothing like that there are companies and corporations that civilians have been taught to idolize and value over musicians that actually are on them and that they claim to present. That's what there is. There's buying and there's fucking selling. And there is a music industry. The industry is you, the fucking wannabe. You, the band, you, the perfect, the person that's practiced your whole life, and now you're a middle-aged motherfucker like me. You make the perfect target for promotion companies, sick A&R motherfuckers, packages, podcasts. You make a perfect business, a perfect music industry for them to fuck you in the ass. Will, you need to write a book and call oh, it a Bible. Not. I'm not done yet, we Mike. I'm not done yet, that. Mike. Wait till you see what I do with these motherfuckers. I'm, I'm well, no, wait to see what I do next. They know what's coming. It's coming. I'll type your book. <laughs> you just let me know. <laughs> the book of savant. <laughs> no, no, but it's the truth though. I'm 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 gonna keep it hundred. And and I don't I don't know this from reading it in a book. I don't know this from watching Motley fucking crew. I don't know this from watching MTV. I know this from being in sepsis. First the band that experience. gets other band likes. <laughs> God, I look the <laughs> hey, 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 man, <laughs> let's go. You guys are a business. Time to write a book, Will. Time to write a book. But this is it. This is it. So you got to, uh, so, you know, you got enough artists together. You get enough artists. So I, I work with artists all day. Oh, and, 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 and one thing I know about artists is they don't want to admit to wanting to be successful. <laughs> it, it, so, so to get an artist to even especially heavy metal to get heavy metal artists to admit that they want to advertise that admit they want to be set successful a um, metal artist won't it, even admit they want fucking friends and then then we talk we talk about that this is some big inclusive fucking dude state prison i know racist gang members in state prison that are more inclusive than local rock wow do you hear what i just said that's my experience you can't take that away from me yeah, I have over 17 years of experience behind bars. I grew up getting brutally beaten by police officers. Check it out. Check it out. This is my experience. I started I started most of the music programs in the state prison. This is just my experience. I learned to play guitar in state prison. We wrote the blueprint to the band in prison. Me, Melissa used to come up to and visit me in the prison and we used to write down on napkins what the stage was going to look like before there even was one actual napkins we built all this in state prison the whole thing the business model all of it the library all of it 
royalties, all of it. Ellis, all of it. Logos, all of it. I was about to say, right down to the logo. Right, <laughs> all of it. Yeah. I mean, when you're, we, no, when you're we're not, we don't do it. So, so, so Melissa's Melissa's plan was not to favor rock and roll. She 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 partnered up with tech companies like Google. She partnered up with tech, with, with, with with Facebook. We, you know what I'm saying? We obviously, we make money with Facebook. People know that. Um, our partnerships, our sponsorships. She did brand to brand, business to business, local to local partnerships, ambassadorships, charities, benefits, working with people eye to eye on the floor. You said something earlier about advertisements, and I said peaks and valleys. And what I was trying to point out to you is that everybody's obsessed with virility and instant success because that's what the gadgets and products are trained to do to cat to um to capture the consumer's attention. It's the selfie. You could be a rock star. You're going to hit the big one. It's the lottery. TikTok, Instagram, put up another reel. I'm going to hit big, baby. I know it. One of these days, I'm going to be just like disturbed. Ooh, wah, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> They're selling you back the posters that you looked at when you was a kid. The music industry itself has changed completely, but it's not recognizable to you because you were never fucking in it. So you're looking up at your poster going, oh, uh, 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 I'm going to be just like him. You're playing it for you think you're going to be Zach fucking wild, don't you? You're going to be Ozzy fucking odd, jigger, jigger, jigger fucking man up there on the big fucking stage. You got it all figured out and you're going to do it from Facebook. Yeah, without going to a show. You know what I mean? We're going to multiple shows to see them live. You know what I mean? You think it's all online, huh? So the products know this. TikTok knows this. Facebook knows this. That's why everybody's a creator. We don't have social media anymore. We just have media. Pretty much. Because the joke's on you. The joke is they've all realized that you all want to be fucking models and comedians and you guys all want to be violin players, but you won't learn the violin. You won't bother. You won't put in the effort. Everybody realized it. You won't discover your own music. You need it fucking suggested to you. You won't learn how to sing. You use auto-tune. To yeah. be a band, you have to compromise. You have to stay in it for more than two fucking years. Yep. It's yep. something you work at. You got, when you, go through shit, you got to fucking power through it, Mike. When you have... I talked about virility... What I was explaining to you is me and Melissa don't have virility. We have what careers have, Mike, peaks and valleys. C careers don't blow up. People that <laughs> blow up, blow down. Ain't that the truth. We don't blow up. We're here to stay. That's what people don't get. We're not going fucking nowhere. We're not in the music business. We're not in the rock and roll business. We're in the business of people. There we go. He said it. The business of people. I think it's something important to, to understand, you know? Uh, people makes every band who they are, every podcast host who they are. Uh, I mean, without you guys, without the people, without, I, I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't, you know, without people like you ready to sit down and have a conversation and tell your truth. That's why I started this podcast, to give people their voice and not, oh, well, you can't talk about this and we can't say that. And Can I tell you something about that? Rapists, rapists need secrets to continue fucking raping people. And people go, well, Will, don't talk about rape. That's fucking crazy. You're on the internet, bro. Don't talk about people abusing musicians. Don't talk about everything you've went through. Don't talk about your experiences, Will. I said, hold on. I'm not talking about other people. I'm not talking about somebody, another individual's experience. I'm, I'm opening my experience because some of my favorite artists the artists and people that I look up to in the world, they don't play a million notes a minute. They don't beat people up. They don't scare people. The people that I look up to are the people that can host a conversation. The people that the artists that I look up to, the most important, powerful people in my life, the most important, powerful musicians that I can remember are the musicians that gave the biggest and the most authentic parts of themselves to the people. 
Those are the people I look up to. I don't look up to the Kardashians. I don't look up. People say, well, what do type I. of rock music artist do you listen to? Fucking none of them. I don't give a fuck. I don't listen to none of that shit. People are like, you like Corey Taylor? No, I don't. I don't like his voice. What the fuck I like his voice for? You like Corey Taylor. I don't like that motherfucker. I don't like how he dresses. It doesn't mean that he's a mean guy. It doesn't mean that he's a villain. It doesn't mean about I'm a bad guy. I never heard of his music. I don't even listen to Slipknot. They mean shit to me. I don't make music for Slipknot. I make music for my girlfriend. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't, I, so I, I'm not looking up at a poster going, I want to grow up to be like Disturbed. I don't give a fuck what they're doing. I, I don't make music. You got people ass. that make music for Spotify <laughs> or they make music for Facebook or they make music for Follows or they make music because Disturbed does or Dave Mustaine. I don't give a fuck about none of them dudes. I don't, I don't worship them. I don't study them. I don't listen to their guitars. I don't care about the guitar tone. I don't reminisce about it. I don't debate about it. I have never listened to an entire corn album. I eat fucking corn. <laughs> what do you listen to, Will? Me? Yes. Sus. Seminars. No, um, I listen to the birds, man. No, I don't listen to anything when I'm writing. That's for sure. Yeah. Because I don't want to write hits. I don't want to write Spotify. I don't want to write McDonald's. If you notice anything about our music, we don't have choruses or predictable parts. We start the fucking song and then we end it. That's it. What about you, Melissa? I don't think, I don't think there's a like people say that there's a, a modern recipe to music. I don't. I think there's every song's different. Everything's different for me. I rock. You know what I mean? I'm not. We're not a 15 album band. You know. Um, we're not. We're not going to stockpile a lot of music. We're not going to be here forever like that. Uh, we're more like. A handful of album bands. Quality over quantity. Yeah, you ain't going to get 10 albums from us. I'll leave that to all the fucking other kids. Four, six, all the other big hot six, shot bands. They can have album after album. I'm not going to do that. I don't write I don't write hits. We just write for the people, man. It's our responsibility as artists to get out our first song to everybody in the world. So if you wrote one song and you haven't... And I go, hey, man, you get that one song out to a million people? And you're like, yeah, well... And I'm like, did you get it out to a million and a half? You're like, yeah, well. And I'm like, did you get it out to two million, you lazy motherfucker? And they're like, no. Then you're guilty. So what did you do? You run out, you, you made another song, right? You were going to re-energize your catalog. You were going to convince. Look, I don't convince rock and roll listeners. I don't convince people that aren't into my music. I don't try to convert them into sepsis listeners. I just try to find more sepsis listeners. It's my responsibility. See, artists point. believe that it's somebody else's responsibility. And that's where the that's where these fucking phony baloney motherfuckers come into your life. They find perfect candidates for people that are waiting around for people to do shit for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we all get those on Instagram and Facebook. Non-stop, eh? dude. All the messages. Hey, can I help you from no? No. That's crazy. No, yeah, the digital media creators. Yeah. 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 I see oh. those guys all the time, man. I'm like, what exactly is it that you do? <laughs> Melissa, when did you start painting? Because I've been looking at your paintings every time you post one. That is a very interesting question. Um, I actually, I've drawn most of my life. Um, however, I only just recently started painting like three years ago. So I want to say during the middle of the pandemic really was like the first official painting I've ever done. Um, I actually know one of our fans who purchased the painting. His name is Martin. He has it. And it's a painting of me with wings, like a little anime version of me. <laughs> and I, I just love to draw all kinds of things. I draw um, mostly like fantasy creatures. Um, I've been doing a lot of Egyptian paintings because uh, we recently found out we actually have Egyptian in our blood. Will does too, um, amongst many other things. So like, I've always really been into Egypt, um, but that developed more so, especially with my paintings uh, recently. And I've done a lot of like horror paintings. So Melissa's the calm know. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <You can tell. laughs> There's definitely a contrast here. Um, but I'm pretty sure the energy comes up when you're on stage, though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. She's more energetic than I am. I'm a totally I am. different person. On yeah, stage. you really are. <laughs> I really am. That's weird. I always yeah. thought that that was strange. My Twitch character kind of is, too. 
You're not you. So people in real life will meet Melissa and they'd be like, I think she, they'll come up to me and they'd be like, Will, I think she doesn't like me. And I'll say, what? No, Gio has a drum. And, 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 ah. and, and they'll lean in and they'll say, no, no, no. I, I really, I, I want to be respectful and I love Melissa. I want to meet her. I just, I don't, <clears throat> but I don't think she likes me. And I'll say, well, why would you think that? And she's like, yeah, it's well, a she's, thing. she's so quiet. <laughs> I say, well, we're at, we're at a heavy metal club. It's really loud in here. I said, you know, uh, I'm also half dead. I said, where did you, I said, where did you introduce you? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. I said, I said, where did you introduce yourself? They say, you know, in front of the stage. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. While she was watching one of the bands. Yeah. You know, I just thought I, well, said it's hard to hear in there, you know? <laughs> I said, did you try her, yeah. I said, you, you try oh, like gosh. pulling her aside or seeing her at the table. Oh no, I'll try that. And then I'll get another one. And I don't think she likes, I don't think she wants to talk to me. And I'll say, why, why, why would you think that? Cause you know, she's so quiet. I say, well, which, what's your first experience with Melissa? And they'll be like, I'm a follower from Twitch. And I'll say, well, that's cause on Twitch, she, she, you know, on, on Twitch, her personality and what, and the, the energy for the program, you know, requires, you know, a lot of dialogue. Um, it's certainly not scripted by any means, but some of some of the stuff we do is like some of our reels and some of the stuff and singing and all the different stuff that we do some of it's like storyboarded at least mm -hmm. so you know we do plan for some of this shit. um i think that people are misunderstood with that but i i do believe that melissa generally creates space to meet everybody at the club what they don't realize is she's she's deaf in one ear so for those people who don't know, she's deaf in one ear. My right ear. And <laughs> like, if you are a vocalist, especially like, you know, clean vocalist, I could probably scream all night, but like clean vocalists, especially in, depending on the atmosphere, if you got the AC running in the RV or different stuff, whatever the climate is, you don't want to talk too much. If you're doing like two or three days, we don't do more than a couple of days at a time for shows. Um, but what we, like three days, like our maximum, we figured out three days after that, we both need a rest. Yeah. And it's not so much the, like me screaming. I need a rest from the clean singing before I need rest from screaming. Screaming, I can kind of do a lot uh, more liberally. Whereas the, the clean singing, especially if it's dry or, you know, you're not getting enough fluid or it's, you know, whatever the case is, um, you know, we'll have to take breaks or rests. It, so Melissa, as a result, she won't talk to me during the day. She's not talking to anybody, you know, especially if you're I'm, doing a back to back. I'm a very quiet person. Right. right. So she'll have her stream and she'll do a lot of talking and then she'll go back. Like after this, I won't talk to her until tomorrow morning. I'm kidding. They were supposed to laugh. Nobody laughed at that. Unless it's my pink <laughs> corner streams. I do get very hyped during our Twitch stream. <laughs> Right, right, those, right. Those are my calm streams. <laughs> my so we streams. encourage Melissa not to yell or become too excited. That's my job. Save it for the show, right? <laughs> right. True. That's why it's never that she doesn't want to talk to people. I think it's because people see us online where we appear very talkative. And that's been a big uh, topic with us lately is like how we are online versus. I don't how... hate anybody. Right, so right. So why you would think that is right. just beyond. It's crazy. <laughs> People will watch. So people will watch. This is like the longest we go online is like podcasts and talking like this. This long form content is the most like if anybody wants to really get to know us, this is the best setting. Not on our channel where we're like putting up music videos and like press wires and shit like that. Like that's like the channels. Right. Or we're yeah. doing like documentaries or we're entertaining or making content. Not all of that is like our daily lives. But because of how sepsis presents ourselves, because we're like the Facebook band because we're the band that gets band like because we're always going live and we're always pushing authenticity and we're in the face of Loudwire, we're in the face of blabbermouth, we're always in everywhere on the top comments and throwing stuff back and challenging the construct. And we're always just asking questions and striving for more and reaching for more and telling bands reach for more, ask for questions, fight back. Um, so people looking down that still though, people forget it's still a very small conduit of our lives. So they might see like whatever type of energy we have through a 20 second video or a clip of me saying the F word and they'll go, oh, I love that guy or I hate that guy or, you know, or whatever the case. Usually like a lot of stuff I get on my guitar stuff, I'll get like amazing work. Fuck off. <laughs> That's it, I, all right. I know. No, I mean, I, <laughs> some, of my, some of my best work is like, thank you. You're responsible for um, sobriety and 
then I'll get, you know, um, you know, body part pictures. For sobriety? <laughs> we go, I'm, we go from mild to wild, Stover. Yeah, we go, yeah. it'll be, you guys save my life. Will you play at my wedding to dick pics and death threats? That's 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 the day. If I brought you guys into a life of sepsis, you fucking mind would be blown of the shit we get. I might need some weed for that. I mean, that could be, all day. That could be a, a good documentary, Mike. Uh, the life yeah. of sepsis. Maybe yeah. Think of running that one. We're down. hiring motherfuckers. So what I'm saying is, I mean, we're hiring people to go through some of the shit. You got to see it to believe it. Move to New England. <laughs> you know, while you were talking, well, I came across something you guys gave me two years ago when I first met you, and I don't I know how it's terrible. Uh, I uh -huh. can't even get it up, but uh, that was a signed CD you guys sent me. Oh, oh wow! Well, you know, I, nice. How was it? Would you say that was two years ago? Yeah, about the yeah, I, I I interviewed you guys and and Mel around the same time. And this is during the pandemic. That's because that's when my show started. I wanted, much like you guys, I wanted to help people. That's why I started my show. Because I wanted to help bands. Mm -hmm. And that karma was good karma, and it came back. You know, so let you're it still go. doing it, man. Yeah. You're, it, you're still, we, and you know what? What what is a massive part of the recipe is doing it. And I know that seems cliche, and I know that seems worn out, and that's awfully like social media in internet influencer fucking guy to say so most people that are listening to me right now is like of course he's gonna say that he's on the internet all the time but uh it's it's you showing up man the hardest part about being in a heavy metal band or being a podcaster showing up dude keeping a schedule shit that bands can't do yeah yeah shit you know what i mean shit that shit that shit that i fit shit that people fail at bro like Everybody wants to be the big, you know, Instagram and go viral and do all that. But what you going to do? You can give a, a dumb motherfucker a million dollars. It doesn't go make him smart. He's just a dumb motherfucker with a million bucks. He about to create some problems for everybody, man. Ain't no reason to give dumb people money. Right. Right. Ain't nothing good to come out of that, man. Be for real. Well, music you know what I'm saying? Like intelligent, intelligent people need money to get the job done. Oh, it's like I said earlier. So we hire people we like. We hire people that are popular. We have this obsession with metrics and popularity, but we don't hire people that are qualified, Mike. As I said earlier, you guys make great music, though, and that's what speaks. It spoke to me greatly, and it speaks to a lot of people. You know, for that, I can get for that, we thank you for that. I am always blown away, and I feel very um, humbled and um, just tender. When people say they like my music at all, because I don't, I don't, I, I just, that's, I just hope that that happens sometimes. Oh, well, I do think a lot of music artists need to hear thank you and hear some appreciation and all that once in a great while. Mike, for, for me, you know, um, sometimes I get overwhelmed with the amount of my peers and colleagues around me that want to be the best at something. So I'm just tired of like personalities and behaviors in my life of people who are obsessed with, with being the best. And because they're so obsessed with being the best, they are never something. Hmm. They're too worried about being someone be else. Something, right? That's what I'm saying. Just be something. There's not, you know, it's not always having the hit or being the best or being the center of attention or like, being the, the the nucleus of all the knowledge of being the that's why I love Melissa so much coming into my life because she was a person that was I was able to step back and allow somebody else to be up front. It's it's a very tremendous opportunity to be a supporter. People don't know how valuable it is to get the assist and help out your community. You know, a country, that was a very halo of you. Well, yeah, real, for real, <laughs> but, but but like yeah, it's fortunate, like, but it, but I, this is what I mean. You drive past a bum, you drive past a homeless guy, you drive past a crippled guy, you guys pass a guy that's whose whole world been shattered, and you point the finger in your thirty-five thousand dollar, you know, bird killing, plant killing, gas guzzling, insect killing machine. And you look at all the trash. He's a he's homeless, scattered around all this rich people's trash. Because homeless people can't make plastic. They don't have plastic factories. 
right? So why you look at a homeless guy like, oh, look at this guy. He's a mess. What do you mean? I didn't, he didn't create those products. He didn't create that. He didn't create that street. He didn't name that street. Some asshole named that street and you went along with it. You're a fucking geek. So a bunch of people got murdered so they could name this street. And now you're laughing at a guy who ain't got a place to live because he's surrounded in rich people's products while you blow smog and smoke in his face. Get the fuck out of here. A country, a band is only as strong as its sickest, weakest people. You understand what I'm saying to you? That's not going to change. That's not an opinion of William. That's just, that's, it is what it is. And if you think that any of this stuff is going to get better, you think that rock and roll is going to get more fair, you're out of your mind. If you think that all of a sudden they're going to start paying more royalties or making less plastic, yo, buckle up. If you think they're going to have less wars, if you think they're going to be less drinking, if you think there's going to be less lying and less selfie, buckle the fuck up. Keep tuning into my channel and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> when do you guys go live? I know, Melissa, your painting show, is it like every um, um, specific today thing? I am not painting. I will be painting tomorrow around 7 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Tune in, tune in at um, twitch.tv slash suffspand to join in. Uh, tonight I will be streaming shortly, actually, like in an hour from now. So, if you yeah, it's I so yeah, tonight is uh. It's ICG game night. We have a gaming community called Immaculate Connection Gaming. And we're actually in a really cool transition right now because we are picking an alternative. We're usually a Halo-based community, and we play on Wednesdays and Fridays. But we're actually in the process right now of, for the first time ever, we've been in gaming community for six years. And for the first time ever, we're going to visit the possibility of playing a new game, a new game every season. So a, uh, an ICG season um, is only three months. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So right, that's a, I think that's a Tonight ICG Tonight is, a, what is it, War Thunder? Yeah, so we're all getting on. We're playing a new game called War Thunder, and we're all going to be confused and say the F word still. <laughs> Probably a lot. We can watch you guys on Twitch. What's that? We can watch you guys on Twitch. Yep, twitch.tv slash sepsis band. Yeah. That is where you can tune in. Again, I'll be on in like an hour. Awesome. Normally Let's there's see. karaoke tonight. Normally, but I've been just getting over mm -hmm. a sickness. So mm. I will not be singing tonight. But normally Fridays is yeah. karaoke. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then Wednesday nights is our podcast, The Honeycomb Hideout with me, JP, and Lexi. Yes. JP's on vacation. And then Sunday nights is Swarm TV, which is kind of like, it's like Sepsis News. Yeah, it's like our little news channel. And Honeycomb Hideout is just me talking about the music industry like I'm doing now, becoming emotional and passionate. <laughs> that's, why, that's why they say this is a business for them. But there's never, I don't think you guys ever, do you guys ever sleep? Um, I mean... <laughs> Again, I'm not getting much, the podcast. Not really much. Yeah. Now that you mentioned it, not much. But that's because we're so excited. Like when we're when we're going to bed, like we're usually really excited about you know what's happening the next day. We're in the midst of shooting another documentary um, and working with all kinds of new people and you know beefing up our staff for the next season and taking on shows. There's going to be, um, I think, out of our group. You know, our group of independent bands that all love each other. I know you guys are out there. They're, I don't want to give away anything. I hope they don't get upset with me. But out of our group, there is um, another very popular uh, band from our group um, who is coming this way and was lucky to pick us up on a tour date that we have not announced. So I'm, I, I'm, I think they're pretty excited about it, too. So I think momentarily you're going to see us on a flyer with – um a very popular band and i'll give you a hint um they are famed for visiting um every single state every season they try to go and hit every state on the continent that's the only that's the only um they're not you know that's not you know it's not gojira or nothing like that you know what i mean it's uh <laughs> you know it's a touring regional rocking working band Awesome. Can't wait to see. You guys have so many things going on. 
so many fun right. things going on. I mean, it's nice to see that the everything we got, new, um, we got new singles coming out. Um, sure of course, did. we just did Bleed Lines. We have a music video coming out to that, and then we have another. Um, uh, we have another song coming out called Romance and Reality. Um, Speaking of Bleed Lines, yes, we have it right here. We don't have a video for it because, as you said, it's not out yet. But yes. let's hit that play button and let sure. everyone hear your well, latest single, single, which, <laughs> guys, it's an amazing song. They sent it to me a few days before it was released, and unfortunately, I was sick, so I couldn't take advantage to come on live and be like, oh, my God, guys. But here it is. Um, Melissa, are you going to lip sync? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you go Millie okay. Vanilli on it. <laughs> Badass, as usual. I appreciate y'all. We don't listen to our music. <laughs> I feel that. I, I, I have a hard time listening. You see that? You listen? I, okay, all right. It's not just me. So yes. I, some of my friends, you know, because we know thousands of people in bands, they listen to their music. And, I, and like, I like when they listen to their music because it's not my music. So like when my friends are listening to their bands, I'm like, yeah, fucking get it, man. You know what I mean? But as soon as they're like, hey, man, let's listen to some sepsis. I'm like, let's not. And they're like, no, really, let's listen to some sepsis. And I'm like, you don't understand. I really would rather not. 
And they're like, why? What is your deal, dude? Like, why don't you want to listen to your music? And I'm like, because I'm working on other music. I don't want, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather be responsible for trying to get that music or try to gain attention for the music or trying to, it's not that I hate the music. It's not that I'm, I'm not ready to move on. I don't have any like issues with that. I promise you it's just cause it, it does have like a little bit of formal distracting qualities, especially like if you're fucking touring cause you learn to like play the music better. As you get older, you learn like just better ways to grow about, doing the scream part you might not use this stupid technique like you're doing a recording you're like i'm gonna rip my throat and do this razor blade stupid technique even though that i know it's not right it's against everything i've ever learned it's a bad technique you know that it's stupid you know you're gonna break the guitar you know you're gonna break the drumstick but you're like i'm a musician and i'm gonna do it anyway (laughs) you know and you're like a thousand fucking people all my trainers all my mentors told me never do this and you're like fucking whoa and you let some fucking big come through and you rip your fucking voice up or you do something stupid or break a string. And then later on, everybody on the song, everybody on the track loves it in the recording. But then when you start to hold it, here's the problem. Then, But then when you start to get good at this stuff, you're like, hey, I can't do that every night. I'm going to go to the fucking hospital. Yep. yep. I can't afford guitar strings. I can't break a drumstick over my head every night. I can't lose a tooth every night. I only got 10 left. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And then before you know it, you're buying partials. No, but before you know it, <laughs> um, you know, you have a whole new insurance plan. So I, you know, I don't listen to my music because of that. I know that was winded, but that's why I don't do it. Cause I don't want to be moved. I don't want to be shaked. I know that I once I, when I get on stage, I know that right now we play black light invasion in a much more mature kind of, you know, especially like with our performances that are very physical you have to write the music in a way that is going to embellish or in, in, at least encourage and um, re-energize uh, the expression uh, throughout the music, sonically speaking. You want to try to make your music and write your music. This is such a trick for people who, who want to get into choreography and playing with your music and with your body write music that works well with your body so later on you're not so when we write music now in sepsis we write the stage it's not just we're writing notes we're not just writing we're writing the entire fucking performance Mm -hmm. so that way so so when we're making note choices or choices on the fretboard we go wait a minute can i do a corkscrew but can i do like a corkscrew reverse guitar flip while doing this riff or not you know what i'm saying and we'll we'll actually think about these things can i run in place can i do can i move around the stage while singing like this you know we'll put melissa on a track and she'll have to sing a certain part we'll do we'll jump and we'll see if we can sustain certain riffs it's important yeah how many times do we go see a show and then the live performance happens and they start running around and all you hear is (sighs) in the mic you're like all right you can't do it that's my point there's all that i got i don't drink any i don't drink any for people out there i, I smoke weed all day but I, I i do not i do not um i don't drink booze because it affects um yes. what it affects you know my bank account it affects me falling down the stairs so that's why i don't do that um and i you know i don't one of the other things i don't vape i don't smoke cigarettes I, I, i'm telling you because i don't want to do what you just did i wear i, I wear a headset on stage because i'm physical i don't want to yeah. I, I, you know, I, I want to be able to to, to vocalize Run and around. help Melissa yeah. out. But I noticed like having a mic stand there, I was fucking knocking shit over and like mm-hmm. just having a barrier between the audience. I'm like, I need to get rid of this because I need to be like, I need to be with everybody, you know? So I removed, me and Melissa removed anything blocking us from the audience because we don't want nothing to, to. And you no longer have that problem where the mic is clicking against your lip rings. Remember Thank you that? for letting everybody know about that <laughs> insecurity that I have on in front of everybody. <laughs> How bad that screw with the audio guy? What is that clicking sound? Right, 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 <laughs> right. right. So I used to have piercings over here, but as you know, like if you, if 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 you have a guitar, right? If you have a guitar and I have a I have a mic stand here, and and I'm right-handed, I have to turn my body. You know, I have to. If I turn my body to the right my picking hand is going to be on top of the, the pole, the mic stand, unless I have a boom or some, some bullshit, but not every spot is going to have a boom. So it might have a bell on the floor and I kept breaking boom stands. So I used to turn my body like this, but I had lip rings on the left side of my, on the left side of my, and went back in my old drinking days. I, we used to be excited like I am here. 
and I would get excited and lunge into the microphone and I'd have all kind of lip ring problems. <laughs> Probably some bruises too, I imagine. No, all kinds of shit. All kinds of shit. <laughs> I'm old now. We used to, I used to go to hospital because of sepsis all the time. And I'm not talking about the, the, the disease. <laughs> we go to shows. I, I break my ribs. I break my arms. All kinds of shit. We were wild. when we were when we were young sepsis, we were really dumb. Remember? Yeah. Ex extreme music. Extreme yeah, music. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's been the most wildest moment for you, Melissa, in this journey of sepsis? How about being chased up the highway by the fan? Oh my god. Yeah, that was what? Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it. Oh, that. she's had a fan snuck sneak on stage too. Yeah, I've had a couple of stalkers in my lifetime. That was wow. that's the stuff that I think is crazy. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Uh, he literally I had to beat a guy up in the man somehow that... snuck past the security guard and I was like about to go on stage. This guy sits down right next to me and he's like talking to me, and I'm like I, I need to like go like you're in my space. I don't know how you got up here, but I was like on the staircase right mm -hmm. by the stage. People don't know. The, so us and our staff, we have walkie talkies. Like, so everywhere we go, like when we're talking, so we can quickly, it's not for security reasons. It's just so like, in case like somebody has something in the truck, you don't want to go back and forth to the venue. Like a bunch of times you might have something down or up or whatever the fuck it is. You want to keep going up and down. It's a logistics issue. So you want to, you know, draw on straight lines and not try to do things twice. It's annoying. So, you know what I mean? So, like, we have walkie-talkies. Hey, bring me the thing for the truck. There's a guy going to the truck already. So, I, one day, I get a call on the walkie-talkie. We're getting ready to go to a show. And I get a chirp over the wall. Our security guy is out getting beer, where he always used to be. And uh, I get chirp. I say, he, he's making his way to the steps. <laughs> so, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> So I, I, all I heard was steps and I turned, I said, what are you guys talking about? And then I couldn't hear anything. And I get back and I just keep a walkie talkie on me. Cause I'm the band POC. So like sometimes I'll be there to meet, we do work with other managers and booking agents and different people. We've had a lot of people work with sepsis, you know? And uh, so we've had other people manage the band before. Um, but, but I've always been kind of the point of contact. So people, you know, I'm like the band town square, you know? So there's like, well, they're making a they're making a run from the steps. And that's the fucking step. You know, this is and this is the old complex that we used to be at. So one of the fans have found out where Melissa lived. And mm -hmm. I came back and he was sitting on the porch. And he, and I said, What are you doing, man? And, you know, and and he, and he had a DVD in his hand. I said, what, what's going on? He said, I'm here to see Melissa. I said, No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> No, you're not. He said, no, no, I just got to give her this DVD. I said, oh, no. I said, she doesn't want that DVD. <laughs> I said, how the fuck? I said, how you know? How you know? <laughs> I did my investigation. And he, and he stands. And I did some, like, mailboxes in the, in the area, you know, like post office boxes or something. I said, you got to leave, man, you know. So you got to get going. So you can't be here. He goes, no, I'm not leaving until I give her this DVD. I said, oh, you're definitely leaving. <laughs> he goes, no, well, I'm going to call. I said, he goes, I'm going to call the cops on you. And he started to call. Well, I, I said, go ahead. You really should. You know? And he started to dial nine. And he, I don't know what it was, but he started to dial 911 and it made me mad. It must just be like the, the ex-convict in me. So I slapped the phone out of his hand. I just instinctively, I broke his phone. You know what I mean? And I kind of turned him around and I made him do a funny dance and I got him out of the door. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> at least you got him. Yeah. Going. And like he knows me from the band. You know, he's like, he's like, so he runs into the park a lot and screams, fuck you, Will. And then that's the last we we seen of him. That was a crazy one, though. And then there was the time, one time we were supposed to do a show and one drummer we were supposed to hire, he was like the permanent drummer. And we had a show and he never smoked pot before. And oh. I'm me, I'm a bad influence. So I'm like, smoke weed, motherfucker. Stop oh being a big God, pussy. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're a rock and roll band. You know what I'm saying? We don't do drugs or anything, but you might see somebody's clothes come off. You might see some wild shit at a sepsis show. We do after parties. We fuck shit up. So this is like, like what you would tell me, smoke some fucking pot of me a pussy, man. You're in sepsis band, motherfucker, right? Like being like, you know, peer pressuring adults that we are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
He's like, all right, man, I'm part of the initiation. You know, we get, I hope he's watching this shit too, because he knows it's real. <laughs> he's still smoking, right? And he can't, so we go, we get up in the club, and this, this club's a big club. We're up there with a bunch of fucking gangster rappers and like a bunch of different people. And we go upstairs, and uh, he's sitting there, and, and they got these VIPs and they, like these cabanas that are like draped over with like, like thin lingerie and like these like, like frilly, like, cloths and linens and textiles and he's like laying back and he's like well come here come here and i sneak over to him i'm like how's it going buddy he's like i can't do it <laughs> said, man you got i said we got to go we got i said we go on at 10. he goes he goes what time do we go on he looks at his watch i said we go on at 10. i said it's in two hours are you gonna be all right he goes no no, <laughs> no. i said we got nothing i said man we have to go on the show's booked there's nothing we can do he said, I goes, you don't understand. I can't drum like this. I said, man, you're going to have to drum like it or not. And you're going to, and I said, I'm going to go get you some water. I yes. went to get the guy some water. I come back. He's fucking missing. <laughs> drummer, dude, the sepsis band drummer is missing, bro. <laughs> this is at a show on the strip in the beach. There's hundreds of people there. I'm like, what the fuck are we going to do? This guy's gone. Next thing we know, we dude, see him. He's running, running down the street. outside with, what was it, Prado? So, so he's got, he's got a, he's a <laughs> bee line in it to the parking lot. I said, where the fuck is, what's his name? We look outside the door. I shit you not. This motherfucker had an arm full of snacks. It was and like, he was, was like, running. <laughs> <laughs> he was in it. Dude, I'm fucking I need to him. eat. What the fuck do you think you're doing? You can't fuck. Dude, we have a like strict, like, no call, no show. You don't come to a band practice. Melissa runs this shit like the military. We'll kick you out immediately. No call, no show. You're done. I mean, it's a job. Right. right. He left the fucking show. This is the crazy shit. Shout out to the homie Axel. He's in the Black Light video. If you go watch Black Light Invasion, the drummer that's in You're the gonna back. You're going to be watching yeah, it yeah, next. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that, that's Axel. He's from a band called Dead Harrison. But uh, if you ever look at any of our videos, there's always different drummers. Well, I mean, if you keep making them smoke and running around with snacks, no, I'm never doing it again. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm never to do that. And look, I'm not. No, I never do. I'll never do it again. I've learned. Yeah. So there's some lessons I've learned. Yeah. I, I'm not a perfect person. I'm still. A, I'm still a work in progress. That was so funny. At least wait till after, after the show. It's like, crazy. Oh, oh no. What about what about when our one of our we had a technician, uh, one of our stagehands. I, I we get to Atlantic City. We're in New Jersey, and I said to this guy, I said, "Look, man." You know, when we play out here, it's fucking dangerous. I said, you got to be careful. You can't just go walking around, you know, being how you are, you know, back home. It's like, oh, no, nah, man, Will, I tell you, you know, and my, st my staff members are loyal and amazing people. And they love to, right, they love to make me happy and they love to work hard. And I, I, I love y'all. Please don't get mad at me for saying this. This poor guy. <laughs> I said, please do not leave the vehicle. We got up there with the tour bus and some other vehicles, and, and we were waiting for another tour bus to pull up from one of the other bands. I said, please, whatever you do, do not. I said, don't get out of the truck. I said, make sure I go in. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go in and check in with, with all the staff and all the hospitality before you get a, guys get out. Now I got the walkie-talkies. I said, until, the, until you hear me chirp on the walkie-talkie, don't come over. Now he's in a hotel. He's in a, he's in a skyscraper in a casino, like down the boardwalk. I said, and anybody that's played, if you're in a rock and roll band and you played uh, New Jersey and you played in Atlantic City, you know when the sun goes down, it's fucking dangerous out there. You got to move around a, a certain way. You can't just be, you know, I mean, you can't just be out and about sightseeing. There's places you want to avoid. And he says, oh, well, I haven't seen, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited for the show tomorrow. It was a 420 fest. There was going to be thousands of people there. It was like a whole big deal. And, and sure as shit, he's like, I don't need, he, so he's breaking protocol. I'm like, you can't break protocol. You can't go out there. I'm in charge. Clearly you can't do that. So he's breaking my rules. He's like, I'm going to break the rules to bring you a coffee, sir. I'm on my way. I said, don't you fucking do it. Don't you do it. And the motherfucker said, hung up the phone. I said, he's going to bring me a coffee. I said, this is the worst thing. I said, I can't stand this motherfucker. He's going to bring me a coffee. <laughs> And then, sure as shit, we get down. So I, so naturally, security's downstairs. I get downstairs. The, my, this is my staff member. He's surrounded by security. They won't let him upstairs to come and see me. So I come downstairs, and they're like, is this one of your guys? I said, yeah. I show him the pass. I give the kid a pass. I'm like, he's all shaken up, right? And I'm looking at him. He's got fucking coffee 
all over his arms. His whole car soaking wet, and his arms are fucking burnt up from the coffee. Steaming. He's all fucking. I'm looking at him. He's wild eyed. I said, "What the fuck happened to you?" I said, "You got coffee all over you." He said, "I know. He's got the coffee cup." He said, "I know, man." He's shaking. I said, "Did some?" I said, "Something bad happened?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "Did somebody try to come and get you?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "You look scared." I said, "Are you? Are, did you get scared?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "I said, what happened to you?" He goes, "He goes. It's just like you told me, Will." I got out, I got out and I got the coffee for you. I thought it was going to be all right. And I said, and it wasn't, was it? And he goes, no, it wasn't. And I said, and what happened to you? He goes, well, I was walking and some big guy came out of the bushes at me out of the alley. I said, he came up. He said, and what did he do? He said, he growled at me, Will. <laughs> I said, I said, he growled at you like raw. He goes, no, like fucking, Whoa. you know what I'm saying? And he does this big round thing. And I said, I said, are you fucking serious? He goes, this fucking huge guy. It was in the middle of the night, so he came at me, and I said, well, what did you do? And he said, I ran. <laughs> I ran, Will. And I said, nah, I said, nah, I was very smart of you. I said, are you okay? He said, yes, I am. I said, you done burnt your arms? He goes, I just had to bring you the coffee. This is the fucking car. The coffee cup was crushed. I mean, it was fucking warm. It was warm brown water. I drank the shit because I felt bad for that kid. He risked his life on the boardwalk in Atlantic City to bring his boss a cup of coffee. <laughs> He drove seven hours to risk his life to watch Melissa sing Black Light Invasion. Oh, get this coffee, damn it. <laughs> Crazy. It's an important cup of coffee for him. He had to bring it to you. But we've had all kinds of shit. We've had people pee themselves, poop their fucking pants. I mean, we've had all kinds of, what do you want to say? We had somebody got fucked behind a dumpster. One of our last shows, somebody got had sex behind a dumpster. Now that's rock and roll. No, we've got the most rock and roll shit ever. We're the most rock and roll fucking band. It has been a long time. People get fucked, dude. Someone's going to get fucked. Well, was it the same guy that had the munchies? No, he wasn't fucking nobody. Nah. Well, he was having munchies, Mike. He, yeah. Uh, the girls he was too him. busy eating. He couldn't do anything else but munchies at that point. Right. Hey. No, that's all he did. He probably would have got some pussy, but he left the show. He should have stayed. And, and and I'll tell you, there was another drummer that stepped up to the plate. It was like, we were out there, we were like, oh shit, what are we going to do? And I'll tell you, the homie was like, I'll drum it. <laughs> and he, it, it jumped right, we, we, we finished the show. Finished it off. It was, I mean, it wasn't the best <coughs> one, but. Oh, the coffee oh, guy got, got laid. Got laid. Oh, I'm working on it. <laughs> that depends on the type of coffee it was. He's still around. Well, you're right. You, you know, you can't get laid if you're dead. <laughs> Well, well, you know. if you have decaf, it might come in handy, but waking the dead that's a, a whole new uh definition to reanimation, if you know what I mean. There's a necrophilia joke in here somewhere, I just can't find it. <laughs> I'm avoiding it, I'm trying to avoid it. I've been trying to avoid it. <laughs> so, how do you guys think like music? Um, there's a lot we of hate like, it. We can't stand it. Music. I, if I, I even write, hear it one more I'm time, gone. I'm gonna lose it. Music. Go ahead. I want to see him lose it. Go, go. No, seriously. No, I don't do that. We got him laughing now. Melissa, give him a hug. <laughs> no. <laughs> warm. Oh, the love. See how close we are. People didn't even know we dated for years. We just lied to everybody. Yeah. This is the yeah, first. The last year, we told everybody that we were together. We lost a thousand fans. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, you probably broke a lot of people's hearts, Will. Yeah, everybody wanted to be with me. You know what I mean? Because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know I'm going to steal this later on. That was funny. Yeah, Will. Yeah. <laughs> Only you. <laughs> I've been working out a lot. That's so funny. No, nah, Melissa's younger than me and cuter than I am. That's all. People were disappointed when they found out that I'm her date. They're like, what the fuck? That's the guy that writes all the shit? Fucking Christ. Yep. <laughs> that dude on the porch should have knew better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Will the stud. Oh, they, they thought I was taller. Will the stud. Yes, that's what Gio was saying earlier. He thought <laughs> you were taller. Hey, I don't respond to any of the rumors online. I don't do rumors. So I guess we're, we're going to have to. Come see a show and see really how tall Gio is and how tall Will is. Oh my God, he's so tall. <laughs> Gio, not, how tall, tall are you again? People tell us all the time when they meet us in person, they always go, Oh, I thought you guys were taller. 
<laughs> well, Gio's definitely over 60 feet. <laughs> I was gonna people say. People always do that to us. Like, seriously, we'll drive 3,000 miles. And people will see us and they'll be like, oh. Yeah. You know what it is? It's a stage. The stage. So well, we're supposed to walk around and <laughs> hover around on a stage? That's fucking yeah. strange. Yeah. yeah, by stilts. What were you going to say? You were going to say, how do I feel about music? How do you feel about the art programs? Um, there's a lot of schools that are saying, like, like I'm from Canada. Yeah. And in Canada, a lot of schools don't even have art programs anymore. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Uh, that's they're because, it that's because, because there's no budget. Because we yeah. have trained, you know, several generations after the 1940s. We've trained everybody to believe that music is about the economy. We just can't get away from it. So, like, if you think about, like, Aborigines or Native Americans or, gosh, I mean, people that go back to Gobekli Tepe. I mean, they dig people up layers and layers. 5,000 fucking years ago, they're digging up guitars and flutes. These people weren't making music for fucking Spotify, dude. We're fucking lost. We didn't make music. Sure, this this I'm sure they bartered and traded, and I'm sure they did stuff like that. They probably traded technology, but what did they really trade with music? They traded feelings, stories, news articles, traditions. They fucking dance because of rain. They dance because they were fucking horny. They danced because they had ideas. They I, they danced and they made music because they 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 mirrored the shape of the sky people are convinced that we are alive to make money for other people to accept us and to be popular and to have this stuff you ask most people that are 14 you say what do you want david he'll tell you i want 400 followers well and then i ask somebody they're fucking 44 what do you want you fucking geek i want 44000 followers well and when you get them, what are you going to do, you fucking nerd? I don't know. It's we. It's, so it's not the reason. It's not what a person does, man. It's the reason behind it. We don't know what the fuck we're doing anymore. Most of us do. And many don't. <laughs> That's why I said the smallest amount of people are responsible for cool, cool. shit. Yeah. Like Tesla, like Copernicus, like Ma Bell, you know what I mean? Like fucking Einstein or Martin Luther King or Jimi Hendrix. These motherfuckers aren't raining from the sky. Muhammad, Jesus, Gandhi, I pick your favorite superhero. Superman ain't walking around all over the place. You're not getting tons of Melissa Wolves. You're not getting tons of these fucking people. There's not tons of Corey Taylors. There just isn't. And I know we all wish there was. But there fucking isn't. And all these devices, all these products are aimed at the weakest people in society to go, you can be a fucking villain too. You can be a superhero too. Here's the rapper package. Here's the rock and roll starter kit. Right, you can be anything. You, you are a podcaster. Be, yeah. You're a model. All you've got to do is Google yourself. That's all, and that's, that's all we're doing. We're playing, we're pointing, we're swiping. We're self worshiping, we're masturbating, we're doing all this stuff that people, the people in. We're doing what people have always done. We're so worried about being popular. We can't, we can't even, we don't know what to do with water yet. We don't know whether to drink it or take a shit in it. Some do both. Yeah. <laughs> we just don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? We just don't know what to do. We take, we, oh, come on, man. Like, come on, man. We're running out of fucking water. I'm not even worried about rock and roll. You know, to be real with you. So why do I use music the same way that the most powerful mythological creatures of all time have used music? God said, let there be light. Let there be light. He sung it. I'm doing the same thing that every powerful man has ever done with music. The word. Vibration. Sound. I'm making it fucking rain. I'm moving people. I'm getting people sober. I'm growing up families. I'm passing on traditions and messages. I don't know why. Maybe the next guy makes music for fucking iTunes follows. Go ahead. I don't give a fuck. That has nothing to do with me. Maybe the next guy, he makes music to make Spotify happy. I'll let the, I'll let the civilians and the consumers battle it out. 
The consumers care more they do about Spotify than they do the artists that are supposed to be on them. They'll fucking argue with their fucking favorite artists over fucking companies that fucking steal. Stealing has never been right. If you go door to door and you ask people about raping and stealing, they'll tell you it's always been wrong. But if you talk about it over and over again, people will get so annoyed and they'll get, come on, Will, they got laws for that, man. And I'll say, I know they got laws for murder, but it never stopped people from fucking killing each other. So you'll sit behind and you'll back yourself and you'll run your mouth about music and morals. But when your morals are up for grabs and you're enforced and you're faced with the law, you will throw your fucking morals out of the window in favor of the law. And laws change. And I'm the one that changes them. Make it rain, Will. People like me make them change laws. But it's not about talking about it. It's about acting. And doing it. It's the doing that does. So I'm not one. I don't make I don't make music to celebrate myself. I don't make music hoping that people like me. I don't come on here hoping to make fucking friends. I didn't go to state prison hoping to make fucking friends. My mother, when I was born, my mother dropped me off homeless on a fucking church. I've never met a blood relative in my life. I, I, you can't convince me. Rock and roll can't convince me. The judge can't convince me. The United States judicial system couldn't shut me the fuck up. I don't follow the rules at all. So I don't follow the rules of rock and roll. I don't follow the economic rules. I don't follow the rules of the land. Everybody made them up. And everybody, you're going to have great ideas and inventions like Copernicus and Einstein. And there's going to be human beings and your neighbors trying to talk you out of it. Trying to tell you that there's a statue of limitations for you to be a creator. Trying to tell you that you're too black, that you're too short, that you're limited, that time's up. That there's this, that in isn't out. Or that you need him without her. Up or down. They're going to try to convince you somehow that there's hot without cold. And I'll tell you, I think you're measuring the same thing. Temperature. Get out of my face. It's, it's small. It's small time. It's small to me. I eat it. I make music for superior thinkers. My message is for su superior thinkers, not for idiots. So sometimes idiots will listen to me talk and be like, I don't like Wills because you're an idiot. I know why. Because you can't understand me. You can't wrap your head around it. I understand. You make music for Spotify. I don't do that. That's it's, it's, so, we ha so the idea of success is a shared one. If you can make predictions about your success and then get to that point and we agree on that same success, then I guess we're successful. So what one person's idea and success in rock and roll is another's. Some people at the end of the year, they wait for Spotify. Instead of showing off their metrics or making graphics or, or, or talking about their music, they wait all fucking year for Spotify to do it. They don't wait for Rap City to do it. They don't wait for Pandora to do it. And they certainly don't do it with iTunes because iTunes doesn't have a product that hosts and lies in metrics. Apple does not have a product that they customize and that they fucking build and manufacture for artists at the end of the year to show off because Spotify knows that people are so thirsty. They're so greedy to show off their metrics. They've built a business model based on rewarding the biggest fucking liars in the game. Yep. Unbeatable. And I can, and, 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 and when I'm, this is not my opinion. It's measurable. It's observable. The biggest flea market festivals right now are everybody wants to be in these fucking companies. Everybody wants to go to these flea market festivals. <laughs> everybody wants to be a part of these big festivals. They're all in court. They're all in court for lying. They're all in court for stealing. They're all in court. So why do I, as me, if I'm in a business and I'm in a budding business, I'm not in the music industry. I'm in a business of my own. So as, as a responsible business owner, I can't partner up with companies that, that reward the biggest thieves and liars. And people will say, yo, what the fuck? You can't talk about rape, Will. There's laws that are there to prevent against rape. And I'll say, yeah, but that's just the whole thing. Rapists need secrets and confusion and, and laws and, and court cases to take forever to continue to rape people. I should know. I grew up with rapists. I'm, I'm not a civilian, so I'm not going to measure the world like you are. I don't do that. So we're not a, we're not a music industry band. We're a, we're a law band. 
And I think not that's a moral why a lot band. of people. I'm not a moral band. I'm a law band. I think it's why a lot of people don't understand uh, your message and when you talk. And you're very, um, your thinking is, you're, you're thinking out there. You're, you're, you're not caught in a box. You're yeah, not. No. I hate that box. You're out there and you're outspoken. <gasps> And you oh, tell yeah. me I grew up fighting with the police. I yeah, oh, I, 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 yeah. I, did, I, I fought the strangest, strongest, scariest motherfuckers on the planet. I had to survive gang bangers and killers and murderers and judges and lawyers and psychological people and people. Oh yeah, I had to survive rapists and and, and, and terror. Rock and roll ain't shit. Everything made you who you are today, and you're strong. And I think that's why a lot of people also look up to you. Yeah. You know, no matter how much hate you get, a lot of people like just in this chat, Geo, and a lot of people that came in and said, you know, that you guys are an inspiration, that you you changed their lives. You saved you know what the difference is a lot of them people, a lot of them people they met they they met me and, and they looked me in the eye. See, people 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 think they hate something because they see 20 seconds of video. Yeah. They don't know who the fuck I am. Everything that we put online is we put online on purpose. I'm on here because I agreed to be on here. But people seem to forget about that. That's a civilian mechanism. I'm an entertainer. I don't come online for any other reason to entertain. So if you're, if anybody's watching this particular program, they're confused about what I'm doing. They missed it again. I'm an entertainer. Mm -hmm. And you're responding to social media and entertainment and me going like this with my hands and me getting excited. And now you think you know me. But you're just responding to an actor. You're just responding to a person with a lot of energy. You're just responding to a message. You're just responding to 20 minutes. You're just responding to 20 second video. And you're formulating, then, then you go off in your imagination like you do about Kim Kardashian and you pretend that you know what she buys for groceries or what favorite sex position she has. You're pretending in your mind, you're role playing like you role play being a fucking rock and roll star. I get it. It's the internet doing that to y'all. Totally. I'm not affected by the internet because I went to prison. I don't give a fuck about the internet. I hope it fucking crashes. I don't really care about it. Everybody needs the internet because they want attention. I don't want attention. I've always been the most popular person in every room I've ever been in. I mean, your personality, your level of energy commands a lot of attention. I appreciate um, it. A lot of it. And um, I stand on it. I, I, you know, I'll go to jail. I'll die for this shit. I'll die for Melissa. So that people don't understand that about me. I'm a real fucking warrior, not an online warrior, not a pretend person. I'm not a tough guy. I don't, I've never, I've, you'll never hear me speak poorly about another human being or another individual. I just stand up for myself. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't say anything. Or I don't do anything that I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't defend with my life. I defend sepsis and what we do here. Uh, boldly, fearlessly, broadly, like I'd speak up against a rapist. So, you know, I, I, I defend uh, my friends, my family, my kids. Um, I defy the laws to defend them. I defy gods to defend them. I defy rock and roll. I defy everything to stand up for myself. As you should. Thank you. I appreciate that man to man. Respect. I do it unapologetically. You, know I mean? like it's, 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 you it's are who you are. Who I am. Right, yeah. right. So you know what I mean? Like I, I realize that people, some people encounter me and they'll say things to me that they would never say to me in the grocery line. I just keep it that way and we're fine. When people see me uh, on, you know, in the venues, people are very nice to me. Um, I've never, I, I never, um, I never encounter poor behavior. I never encounter bad feedback actually ever. Um, some people imagine that I do, but I actually don't, I, you know, um, people are really, um, generous to me usually in a public setting. People are very kind, polite, gentle, soft-spoken as I would be. Well, I mean, we can see, we can see Will and we could see, you know, <laughs> that, like you, you get big, you get explosive, but then you get this calmer moments where we can see the glimpse behind the, 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 the personality, the 20 seconds we see on Facebook. Right, um, right, right, right. What right, you right. want your character to be, because that's what you guys are. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that you is know, a very I mean, real part of me too. You know what I mean? That's not, that's not like, like, you know, I didn't want people to feel like, you know, that's like some scripted part, but there is, I, 
you know, so, there is a, uh, an ingredient in social media that when we watch it, we're bracing for impact. We're bracing. We're getting ready to react. We're getting, it's not just me. It's not just you. It's not, you just, you, if I say to somebody, rock and roll was created in the 1940s and comes from early blues and gospel country music that derives from the early transatlantic, you know, slave movement, people get fucking mad. <laughs> And, and I say, what the fuck, man? That's that's American history. That's not something that happened in the fucking Aztec temples. This isn't fucking Zeus. Yeah. We're not talking about some fucking mythological fucking person throwing lightning bolts at Kerry King. We're talking about observable, measurable fucking information that people buy in the institution. It's not an it's not an opinion. And they, you know what I'm saying? It's a it's a it's a very bold, measurable topic. We can see it, we can go back, we can fucking measure it. You know what I mean? We can put it in a lab and do it over and over again. It's not like somebody even walking on water, moving stones. It's not, it's not debatable. We know when people came to the fucking country. We know where the drum kit came from. This is not, you know, the Great Pyramid. We know where rock and roll came from. We know how fucked up this country is stealing music. <coughs> we know that from the streaming era, consumers have been fucking convinced that stealing music is okay. You can steal from anybody in the fucking world. And, and it'll go to court. Biggest companies in the world, Amazon, you know, uh, Walmart, they all have wager litigations right now. Please go look at them. Blue Ridge, AEG, hello, guys, DW, all you big DW, they're in fucking court. And people go, the fuck, Will? That's fucked up, man. No, I'm a businessman. I have to know what other type of business people are in litigations, the people that are, so I said, we're a law band. So when people see us talking about Blue Ridge, they're like, what is he talking about? I'm talking about they're in court for, for infringement. I'm not the judge. I'm just making you aware when you go, I want to go to Blue Ridge. I want to go. Do you? Do your homework. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You have never bothered to look. That's all I'm saying. The same thing happened in, in, in the 80s with the, with the Catholic Church. I'm a victim of it. I was raised in a church. That's not anybody. Else's. I'm not talking about somebody. I'm talking about me. I was raped in a Catholic Church. I was sexually abused and assaulted in a, in a Catholic Church. I was part of the, the big 80s fucking scandal. There I was. I'm, now I'm part of the music scandal. Yeah, but you're kicking it. You're kicking it in the ass, though. I just say what I believe in, man. And I, and I'm, you know, I'm talking about my experience and my education. And you know, other bands might have a different experience. You might be best friends with Danny Wimmer. I don't know. I'm not saying that anybody's guilty. Or anybody's a bad person. I'm just saying before you go do business with William Savant, shouldn't you see if I have any rape cases? I would. Know who you're getting involved with. I, I would. I wouldn't. People say, why do you do that? You, we don't want to know that. Why? Why don't you want to know who you're doing business with? Do you know how many, do you know how many pedophiles and rapists there are in, in local and regional rock right now? You never even yeah, thought about that. Do you know no. all the people that come on your programs? You better look. I would. I would. I got too many women and kids around me. I got I to gotta, I gotta do shit like that. Now, look, if you're in the professional industry, you don't got to worry about that. Because if you're going to go in the professional industry, get ready to hang out with rapists and criminals. For sure. sure. That's not a conspiracy. I'll show it to you. R. Kelly's on Spotify, dude. <laughs> now, no, no, seriously. Yeah, Charles, Charles, Manson has, Charles Manson has a Spotify, dude. His estate has a Spotify. I've seen it. Fucking killers. <laughs> not, not, that's not the type of company I want to roll with. But if, but if Will, but, but if Melissa Wolf, if she had a house full of killers, people be talking shit about us online. If I was a fucking rapist and a thief, everybody be talking about me. But, 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 you know what I'm saying? But if I was in court in litigations for being wrapped up from stealing from musicians, all the rock and roll would be talking about Will. 
But if you're popular enough, if you're cool enough, if you're on one of those big posters, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to take a professional route. We're not a professional band. We're an industry internet band. We are a fucking um we are a financial band. We are an advertising band, but we're not a rock and roll industry band. We're, in, you know, we're influencers. We're independents. But you can't be, true, not in today's world, you cannot be independent and try to think you're going to take a shortcut to a professional uh, career arc. Yeah. You cannot take a professional career arc in hopes to become independent. I got you. you. I got you. You cannot fake being an independent and oops, wind up in the professional industry. We know a lot of independent bands that don't want to be independent. They're pretending to be independent, hoping they're going to be go professional and hoping that they're going to be a part of some fucking club. But I know better than that because there's only one way to be a part of that club. There's only one way to be a part of that club is to shut the fuck up and pay for it. Have fun being a fucking rock star. I don't want no part of it. So when you see me in the club, I don't want to be part of your little fucking heavy metal clubs. I'm part of the people club. I'm part of the human beings. You can come to my shows and you're not going to get beat up. You're not going to get robbed. You're not going to get bullied. You're not, you don't have to fear for your life. We're the band that people that always wanted to love heavy metal, they can come to our shows and they can feel safe. We're the band that if you were confused, you were scared of the devil or all the gangsters and tough guys, you could come to our show where it's safe to dance and have fun and make friends. That's the kind of metal we are. We're the inclusive metal. Yes. We're, we are the inclusive, independent, people to people, face to face, send us a message metal. We're the metal, they're not. And, and what we do is we research everything that weak bands do and we make sure we don't do it. There you go. We research, it's a residual part of that ripple effect. We research and we band stock everybody from highest to lowest to know who to beat and what to avoid. Smart man. Very important things, especially knowing who to avoid and who not to. And I work for myself so I can give myself as many days off as I feel like it. <laughs> that's the best thing your own boss that's amazing guys i know you guys have to go soon because you have a live yourself on twitch before you guys before we listen to um your next song i want to ask you the nixus question at every interview i ask this question because i think it's important there's no right or wrong answers obviously and it's personal to everybody if you could get to sit down with a younger version of yourself What would you tell yourself? Not pepper spray him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's that one more. Let me say like a whole bunch. Seriously. Um, practice, um, practice cognitively and mindfully. Not all practice is good practice. You can just go, oh. It's not uh, some some practice isn't great. So if you practice being an asshole, you just get better at being a dick. There we go. We go hand in hand. For me, I would tell my old self to practice more stage presence. <laughs> I knew you were gonna see that. Dude. That is an absolute because I used to hate doing it. So can I, I say so many hate. young women say that in rock and roll? I've heard so many, and I'm not saying that that's When you're why. Young, you don't really. I don't know. You're you're, you're elsewhere. In your mind, you were, chasing, you were just, thinking about boys. <laughs> you're doing something else. You're not <laughs> doing, whether it's boys or whatever. I understand. Um, so yeah, definitely stage presence and always practice more with your singing and never feel like you've made it, quote unquote. Just mm. continue to grow. Because th there's never like You're never the best, you know, you, there, you, there's always room. But the problem grow. is if you, if you made it, then you're done. <laughs> exactly. If you're the exactly. best, then, then And a lot of young people tend to think like because, that. Well, that they, they the products push it. you like that. They say you have to be the best. If you're exactly. not the best, if you don't have them, if you're not pushing another guy down, if you're not, if you're, if you're not standing on top of your fans, then you, you haven't made it. 
So there's definitely a few things I would tell my younger self. Generosity, man. <laughs> Gen generosity, <laughs> having thick skin, letting it roll off your back. Well, guys, it was awesome to have you here. I know that I have, I could sit here and talk to you guys for another, like, probably four or five hours. It's and, so and me, no, me and Mike will never, will never stop. You know, you know, we just won't. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it again, though. We got more. I mean, the good news is with us is that we have more to say. We can always come back. We can always come back. <laughs> and Willie, really, anyway, one thing you know about us is we're in for the long haul. And Willie, really, really you know it's a, the same game. I'm here for a long time. I ain't going. Right on. Right. I appreciate that. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope we get to be here together. We're going to keep having these talks. We're going to invite Mike. I know Robert also from Concert Junkie was talking about you guys with me the other day. So we're in our groups, in our, this is for everybody listening. If you're in a band, you're a podcaster, you're a creator or a gamer, and you make original content on the regional level on the, I, I, I'm not, we're not, I'm not saying you can't, but like, we're trying to keep it down with the celebrities and the, the big acts. And all, they already have all the magazines and all they already have all the TV. And all the, this is for us. Some of our groups have 11,000, 13,000, 20,000 different spots. Our discords, our, dis, our discords are a great place too. There aren't bands like us that create groups. There aren't enough bands that create groups with five to tens to 20 thousands that are willing to share. There are, there are some that are starting now and see what we're doing. And I think that this is great. There doesn't need to be a million bands to do this. As long as there's one voice that people can hear, if there's one voice talking, then then it's hope. As long as that there's, you see what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter if everybody turns into assholes and everybody goes into metaverse and everyone's being mean to each other and everybody's, you know, can't grow. As long as there's one person in there that's growing and that one person is willing to keep talking, then there's hope. So some of our groups, I know people are shy with this sort of stuff. You know, we don't own none of these apps, man. Fuck these guys. Share liberally. If your other bands don't want you to share on their timeline, if other bands don't want you to share in your group or you're going to go to some people and blocking you, blank, then fuck those groups. Come to our groups and share in our groups. You can share in our groups in front of our fans liberally. And nothing against, you know, um, you know, Spirit Box. Nothing against Sleep Token or nothing against Disturb. They're not going to let you do that. But you can come in our groups. And you can, you absolutely, if you're in a band or you have a podcast, go in the Swarm, go in the Female Fronted Alliance, go and you can learn from our groups in the Rock Metal Reset. Um, it's more educational based in there. Um, but reach out to Lexi, reach out to us. If you guys got great ideas, if you've been through a fucked up situation, if you have a story you want to share that you want us to talk about on your podcast, and maybe you're nervous about it, you don't know how to go forward. I'm not scared of nobody but my mom and God himself. And my mother's not here anymore. Rest in, rest in peace. So what I'm explaining to y'all is come to me liberally. You can share on my groups. You'll never be scolded. You'll never be turned away. We don't do any cyber bullying. There ain't no slut shaming. We love all colors. We love all types of metal, all types of rock and roll, new, old, learning, beginner, pros, artists, streamers, strippers, dancers, Gamers, singers, beatboxers, rappers, everybody is involved with, with the sepsis movement. The swarm is something for everybody. Um, we're just hosts of it. So I'm I'm also in your in your Discord server. You guys have joined our Discord server. I mean, it's awesome. Their Discord server is huge, guys. There's even like uh, you can have your own, what is it, like kind of like Magic the Gathering card or something like yeah. that? Like, guys, it's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> the is this yeah, game cool. called the Swarmiverse. And yeah, if you're into Magic the Gathering, it's similar to that. But we've like really kind of made it our own. We've made it our own rules. Um, but it does play much the same. Whereas, like, you have these like little energy cards that you need to play in order to play a swarmy card, which is kind of like what a, a beast card would be a monster, or whatever. Um, so you play your swarmy cards, and when you join our Discord server, we'll make you a swarmy card for this swarmy verse universe that we are. I, I'm gonna have to get me one of those. Oh, yeah, yeah, same here. 
Yeah, all you need to do oh, is fun. actually talk to fun. Gio. He's in the chat. He's the one who's been helping us create the cards. Um, if you speak with him, his name is Video Goth in the Discord. Send him a message. All we need is a, a photo of you and a quote for the card. PG-13, please. <laughs> Amazing, guys. Um, we're going to have to say bye for now because i'm gonna have you guys back for sure i mean this was an amazing conversation i know mike was really happy also to sit all together so we will have this talking again but for now um i would love you guys that are watching right now they're they're going on twitch so just after i played a video because we're gonna play um which video that i put up because we had two but uh, black like invasion um, so I'm going to play that video. I'm going to tell you guys bye so you guys can exit and get ready for your Twitch stream. Thank you. Right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having us. Good seeing you guys again. We'll stay in contact. Take care, guys. Thank Sounds you. Thank good. you, Mike. See you soon, bro. Bye. Yes, sir. And for whoever's going to be left, we're going to listen to the song, and then me and Mike will say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Catch you later. Much love.
that breakdown though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Right. When, right. When you think it's over. <laughs> that was that, that. That's amazing. I mean, sepsis makes amazing music. When you see their videos that, that makes me completely want to go and want to see a sepsis show or hopefully I'm <laughs> touring down here at one point. Yeah. And you'll be sure. I'm you sure would, you, they, they would be pretty impressive to see live. The the energy that that will just yeah off is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I, I, hell of a stand up guy though. Uh, obvious, you know what I mean. Like, if people take some time, don't go on first impression, especially not what you see online. You know, you take some time to sit down with that guy and. Just, yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. Exactly, exactly. I mean, he's he, very well educated, obviously. Um, educated in what he's doing right now. I mean, a, a lot of things that he said tonight made a lot of sense. Absolutely. He's, he's not a part of the machine. He runs his own. Yep, yep. And he has a beautiful community behind him. Yeah. Swarmies that are still here. Swarmies that were here all night. I appreciate you guys. You guys always show up for your band. Always show up for Sepsis. Yeah. And it's it's beautiful to see that the the relationship between them, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm I'm glad I'm part of that group. That's like the only band I could think of since 2020 outside of, well, what you were involved in for a while. But um, they're the only band that I actually was always checking out their Twitch or their live streams or interacting or if I could donate wood. You know, cause I'm not in much better situation than most people, you know, but they were, I think they were the only one from 2020 next to just a f maybe one other that I was that dedicated to. They're good people. They're good yeah. people. You made a connection. Obviously, you and Will have a, a wicked connection going on there. Yeah. The banter was incredible. But um, I will, I will, I will say good night for now, Mike. But thanks uh, for having will, me. We will revisit this. We'll have them again, and I'll have you with us for sure. Awesome. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. Well, have a good night. This was the Nixus Podcast and Mike Stoverload from the Stoverload Music. Um, make sure you check him out on the Nixus Radio on Mondays, every second Monday, which would be this coming Monday, right? Uh, I was going to ask you about that. I think that is right. Yes, this coming Monday. Uh, which when this episode is going to air is going to be another Monday. But, uh, you know, bear with me, guys. Check out the website. <laughs> You'll see when Mike's coming on. He also plays every Friday on Good Music Radio. Good Music Radio. So you can always catch another show there. It's not the same show, so you can get your double dose of Stoverload podcast music um, on some weeks. And on other weeks, you get one of them on Fridays. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Head over to Twitch. Receptsis, they're going live right now. See you later, Mike. See you, Mel.